Hi everyone, it's Bert from Season Gaming, and welcome to BitCast 67. I'm joined as usual with Ains and Dan. A lot of news for you this week, a lot of things to really discuss. No review for this week, but we are going to talk about what we're playing and what to kind of expect from us for the next few weeks. So let's get started with the biggest news this week that has hit social media with a massive storm, and it is Ninja leaving Twitch and joining Mixer. Now, we're really just going to share our opinions on here. Um, we're not really going to talk too much about his contract or anything like that. That's kind of silly. But um, what do you guys think here? This is, a, this is a big deal for Microsoft, in my opinion, and Mixer. Obviously, uh, Mixer is owned by Microsoft. But do you guys think this is a big loss for Twitch? Is someone else going to take the helm at Twitch now from a streaming perspective? What are your opinions here? Uh, it's certainly interesting. I uh, didn't see it coming, and it's what we hear, right? A lot of money, but no specific details were given. But, um, yeah, this is big. Uh, I mean, Ninja alone drives a massive, massive following. Um, he's probably the most popular gamer, I guess you could say, in the world. Um, he single-handedly, in what, the day and a half since this was announced, has brought over hundreds and hundreds of thousands of new people to Mixer and some actually pretty prominent streamers, not, you know, not the people with millions of followers, but people that I would say are like partners uh, and definitely affiliates are switching over to Mixer as well. So it's also, you know, we saw that it's the number one downloaded app on the iOS store right now above YouTube and everything else, where previously it wasn't even in the top hundred. So it, it generated a lot of traffic for sure. Um, the reason I think this is big if you weren't aware, and I know some places have talked about this, but if you weren't aware, Ninja used to be a pro Halo player. And back when even Halo 5 launched, which is now four years ago, believe it or not, um, he was a huge streamer of Halo 5 uh, multiplayer and really kind of brought that community. Even guys we played with used to watch him a lot. And so, you know, if you think about the timing with um, Halo Infinite coming, Obviously, like with all Halos, they're going to do a multiplayer beta, multiplayer beta at some point uh, early next year, I would bet. Uh, you got Ninja on Mixer. You've got Project X Cloud launching later this year for our insiders. Um, it's really just about generating traffic and visibility and revenue uh, as a seed for um, Halo Infinite and Scarlet next year. That's what it is. It's just generating views and traffic. So it's, uh, it's a pure marketing deal, in my opinion. Seem pretty divisive for sure. You know, you see a lot of people getting very upset with this, saying that he got, you know, he sold out. And then you see people are like, hey, 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 he's coming to Mixer. I don't watch streamers typically because I like to play games. I guess I'm just old school like that. And, you know, it's not to say, you know, there's anything wrong with real you know, watching streamers. But um, <clears throat> I mean, to me, this is good for Microsoft, it's good for, you know, Xbox. Um, hopefully this will bring some, you know, a little bit more recognition to the platform. I mean, obviously it already has. Um, it's a it's a great platform that we use for BSG. You know, it, it's it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it, it's in my opinion much better, you know, than Twitch only because it's you know the latency and the 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 FTL you know options and stuff. Um, I'm all for it. You know, way to go, Ninja. Get paid. You know, <laughs> do your thing, man. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think it's really strange to criticize him changing career to a different employer. I mean, I, I think about that just in the real world of people that have your nine to five job, or you think about it as with athletes in the NFL, NBA or whatever. And I, it's strange to me to criticize someone moving to another company just because they've been at another one as your career grows. I mean, that's you rarely see people these day these days stay at a at a company for their entire career, uh, much less a lucrative one like he's in, where he's a hot commodity. So, I mean, if I got a job offer from somebody else, and I'm not going to say well, I've stayed at my current company for a while, they've given me more knowledge and more tools for my career. I'm just going to stay here now. That seems really counterintuitive to a career path in general. But um, I don't know. I mean, what do you what do you think about that, Ains? I know you've been at your employer for a really long time, but yeah, yeah, uh, over twenty if, years. If now. You got offered. A, yeah, if you got offered a, a CEO position somewhere with all the knowledge you've gained at your existing employer, would you say, no, I'm going to stay at this one just because I've been here forever? I mean, that's just yeah, really strange to me to, to, to say that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a good perspective um, and to look at it that way because that's what it is. I mean, this is his income. Yeah. Um, and regardless yeah. if he's a you know multimillionaire, and we know he is, um, and even more so now, um, 
Yeah, I think you do what's best for you. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. If it fits what he wanted right. to do, and, you know, he's a huge, like I said, he's a huge Halo fan, too. This might have been an opportunity to get away from a platform whose reputation has not been very good lately in Twitch. Um, it's considered by many to be a toxic place with bad management at times, and Mixer is, you know, viewed, at least right now, as a uh, generally positive community. So maybe he had other reasons we don't know for leaving. But, yeah, when you look at it from a job perspective, He's got to do what's best for him. And people, like you said, are right. you're always going to get those people, oh, he's sold out and he's you know going back on the company that made him. Well, Twitch didn't make him, first of all. Um, and second of he all... kind of made Twitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Exactly. And second of all, um, no one knows what he's going to do with that money. I mean, in general, I don't watch him. I don't really have any personal thoughts on him. But from all, what I can tell, he seems like a generally good guy. He's not some outspoken kind of clown that... Um, you know, just happen to get famous for those reasons. He seems like a generally good guy, so who knows? He could take twenty million dollars that he's getting from this contract and do very positive things for other people. For it. you, never know. Yeah, you can't judge him for that. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, is, is Amazon bankrupt all of a sudden? No. Oh, so they have billions and billions <laughs> yeah, of dollars. Yeah, I think Amazon's gonna yeah. do okay. They, they'll, they'll be fine, and they, if they really, really wanted to, you know, they probably could have kept him over there. Um, but so, so I don't think really money was even an issue. I mean, it, it's. Because Amazon would have matched it probably, or they would have just said, you know, hey. That would have been funny, more. an Amazon Microsoft bidding Hilarious. war. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. right. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it's it, he's not getting $1 billion over six years, even though some people think so. <laughs> okay, just just to point that out. Hey, I, I don't know what journalists. He, journalists, yes. So, I, I don't know what he's getting. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I mean, it, it's he's doing it for, you know, I think other reasons, you know, other than money. But, you know, good luck to him. You know, I mean, I wish... That could be my job. Yeah, and, right. And, uh, you know, I was good. I wish I could be ninja <laughs> and uh, have all his money. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so Dan, since I guess your kids and I, I don't know, Ains, if Michael does any streaming watching, but is there any other YouTubers or I should say Twitch streamers that you guys think would maybe take over? I know like Legions of a, a fairly uh, popular one. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of them that are really popular. But any guy, anybody else you think that's gonna Take over at Twitch? I, I don't even watch it enough. I don't know. Comment on it. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Wait, what, yeah. what, what's there? Shroud. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know who that is. I Shroud's mean, a big one. Yeah, Shroud's yeah. really popular. Yeah. yeah, he seems like a nice yeah. person. It's interesting. I mean, I just I wonder, you know, if maybe their salary might go up now or something. <clears throat> That'd be kind of funny at, at someone like a Twitch. But I think it's based on your view, uh, subscriber count and view count that you're doing. So. Anyways, funny story. As Dan said, it was a bit divisive this week. I saw a whole bunch of just weird perspectives on social media, and maybe that's something I shouldn't be doing to begin with because you just get the weirdest <laughs> comments from social media. But um, let's move on to our next story. So um, one that you guys are super excited for. I'm excited for it as well, just um, coming up right around the corner. Um, August, a busy month, but next month is when I think the crazy fall games start coming out. And we've got Borderlands 3. They uh, announced this week they have gone gold. So game is just about ready. It's completely done. Um, I guess at this point they're just going to crispen up the game, fix any weird things, maybe a patch that's coming. But that's releasing September 13th. So right around the corner, about a month away. Big deal here, guys. It's It's gone gold. We're ready. I'm ready. I could say it, but I'm going <laughs> to save it for later. I'm going to save it for later. So I have gone pretty much like dark on any Borderlands 3 information because I'm so excited about it. The last thing I really watched was the big reveal um, that Pitchford did at, uh, was it PAX West or East or something? Yeah. I could yeah. pull out a deck of cards if you want. No. Okay. Nope. We're not going to do any magic tricks here. <laughs> that was really, I mean, I, I've kind of caught little things here and there, but I'm trying not to, you know, get too much into it because um, Borderlands has been one of my favorite franchises uh, right up there with Bioshock. Um, so September 13th, you know, don't look for me to be anywhere other than there. You can so. catch us online. Yeah, <laughs> come on, jump in. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm the same. Um, I, I think I've said before, Gears and Borderlands launching in the same week. It's bonkers. Um, I will not be available the week after that to anybody, as Dan just said. So leave me alone. You can find me online. Um, yeah, <laughs> we should do the bitcast playing those games. That'd be hilarious. Done. Yeah, what do we consider it done? <laughs> I'll ask, Nin I'll ask Ninja if he wants to join on Mixer. Yeah, get we'll this see how going. that goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm similar to you. I, I've Other than I watched the trailer for the actual characters, because they did Moe's this week, and they did um, the guy I'm going to play as, whose name is escaping me. 
Yes. To start with, anyway. But anyway, just the character trailers, because those are, have a lot of personality. They don't show a lot of the actual game. But all the gameplay stuff I've stayed away from. I'm just, I'm ready to play it. So this works out perfect for me. I've got a whole bunch of travel in August, but I come back in September, and uh, I will be home and ready to play. Yep, so really quick story there. It's just gold. Uh, we're excited for it. Everybody's getting excited, even more excited for it. So Borderlands 3 right around the corner. So next one is uh, mind-boggling, but at the same time may not be mind-boggling who it's coming from. So EA steals another awesome headline by saying, and I should say the EA CEO. I'm not sure if that represents the entire company, but I guess it kind of would if your CEO is messaging that out. But He's saying that the games from EA are not wanted on the Nintendo Switch, which has left a lot of people's heads scratching like crazy. Uh, we've seen quite the success from cross-platform games coming over to the Switch and selling relatively well. I mean, they don't sell bonkers or anything, but is this true, guys? No one, no one on a Nintendo Switch console wants to play an EA game. I think you misheard what Switch owner said. They said, please don't bring Anthem because it's a waste of time to the Switch. But they weren't <laughs> referring to all EA games. Um, no, this is just generally stupid. I don't understand this one at all. Um, especially, I mean, it goes without saying, the sports games, because those would be fantastic titles to be able to just play any time. Uh, when you think of the FIFAs, oh, the yeah. Maddens, NHL, whatever sport you like um, you know because they have all those collecting modes and franchise modes and they have a lot of players still even though the, the competition online is very healthy there's a lot of players who play the ultimate team modes and the franchise modes I mean religiously why would you not want to play those on the go especially if you did cross save cross progression just cool, play it nice. home on your Xbox or PS4 and then take it with you on the switch I, I would do I'd be buying um, probably FIFA and NHL extra copies of them to be able to do that so um yeah i don't i don't, I don't know that's andrew wilson he hasn't done a good job at ea in my opinion who, who knows what he's thinking i don't know it just continually shows how out of touch these people are yeah they're just so, yeah I, don't I i love madden i play it every year even though it rarely changes i'm sorry much, but i love my football so <laughs> you know th this screams you know what you know maybe the gamers don't want to buy our super excessive microtransactions on the switch maybe we won't get as you know speaking of ultimate team yeah i mean that's that's you know it, right now there's three switch games from ea there's fifa like 17 fifa 18 which was like a yeah. a, a screwed up version yeah. anyway and then fey and that's it and so if you don't think that you could bring some of those games um i'm not saying maybe like the graphically intensive ones you know that might really suffer battlefield. from battlefield right yeah. you know but madden i mean you could really play that at most any resolution it doesn't matter and plus taking stuff on the go is is so much better than just you know you know i mean most most madden players most fifa players will play on the playstation or they'll play on uh the Xbox, for sure, the the hardcore, but having that option, I mean, unless it's, you know, bringing it to the Switch is actually, you know, going to lose them money, I, still, <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand how, you know, is it cost that much to port a game over to a small... Not the purchase? way EA does it. No. So, <laughs> you know, stop it. Stop it, EA, you stupid... Stupid. You know what's man. you know what's funny about this though. I don't know if you guys remember. Well, you probably remember, but going way back when the um, Dreamcast came out and Electronic Arts announced that they were not going to put DAA sports games on the Dreamcast, and that was like a death blow at the yeah. time. They were that big of the market share. Um, now this is just we just shake our heads and say the Switch is going to dominate sales anyway, as we've seen. Right. You guys are just losing out. Makes no sense. Also, we yeah. got two K football. Well, out of that for the Dreamcast, yeah. the best Dreamcast. Yeah, I remember game the, ever. the 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 2K game was amazing it on the Dreamcast. Amazing. I still I still have my copy. Me too. Still yeah. the best football game, one yeah. of the best football games I've ever played. So good. Yeah, they're funny enough. There is still people that update the I roster do. every year and they play the same game. Yep. So um, good on them. <laughs> if you want to play one, that's that old. Dreamcast. Because play it over here. We'll come over. <laughs> we'll play one on one. We'll play one on one. Fantastic. <laughs> Be hilarious. Yeah, it's funny enough, it's aged pretty well. Um, I, I played it probably about a year ago with some buddies just to see what it looked like, and it played really well. So, I don't know. Weird thing there, uh, we try not to make sense of a lot of EA decisions that happened this this past generation, I guess, but um, it's really strange that they would even say something like that. But um, 
it is what it is. So <laughs> let's move on to another Switch announcement that kind of surprised me. But um, Outer Worlds is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, they had a trailer that came out this week. The trailer didn't really show any gameplay or anything. It was more of a dev talking about the game itself and how they want to bring it over to the Switch. Um, this was kind of a surprise for me because when we saw the demo at E3, uh, it wasn't necessarily pushing the envelope with technology or graphics or anything, but it was looking pretty good. And I was actually expecting to play this one on the X or the Pro, depending on where you want to play it. But um, I want that best experience on, on the console, and that's where I wanted to play it. But I have a feeling this is going to be extremely downgraded for the Switch. And some of the newer games that have come out that have been downgraded aren't the best experience. This one kind of surprised me. What, what about you guys here? The more I see of Outer, Outer Worlds, <clears throat> the more I want to play it. I mean, it looks yep so cool. I mean, it, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting the Fallout New Vegas vibes and everybody describing it very similar, yep. but, you know, also being its own game. I mean, it's that's a home run. As far as it being announced for a Switch, we literally just talked about this. It's a no-brainer. I mean, yeah, it might get graphically downgraded. That's fine. It's not a multiplayer game where it's going to, you know, really matter so much as far as, you know, how it runs on its frame rate the frame rate yeah it's just it's but you'll be able to take it on the go you know and this isn't probably another one that i'll probably buy two copies of because i'm stupid <laughs> so um yeah I, actually i don't have to buy two copies because that's why it comes to game pass so i will have it on xbox you know for my game pass and then i will just buy it on the switch and i hope there's cool. cross progression that would be awesome i saw an interview i can't remember though if uh if that was uh I one of the cases, yeah, man, I can't remember. But, I mean, you know, the, the Switch is growing huge. I mean, it's, it's yeah. you know, what, what I saw something that it was, you know, on pace, you know, I can't remember what they called it, but, you know, to sell as much as, like, a PS4. If they were to continue, yeah, at, you know, at the same, at same pace, you know, that's crazy. Crazy. Why would you not want to bring your, your games to a Switch? That's what I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're, 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 you're opening up a whole new you know, audience to this stuff. I mean, yeah, the, it's gonna, it's not going to look very good, but, you know, it's comparatively. So if that was the only version of it, you know, people would be like, oh, this is still fun. It's still a fun game. So yeah, I just hope it's cross-progression. That would um, be awesome. Yeah, I mean, we went from talking about a dumb decision by EA to a very good one by Private Division. It's the company that's um, publishing this. So, um, the, you know, if there's cross-progression, I probably will buy it for the Switch. Mm -hmm. If there's not, Probably not, because I'm not going to play an RPG in two places. But other than that, yeah, I think this is cool. It's cool that Switch players get to play it. It's going to be really interesting to see people turn on their Switch and see a loading a launch screen that says Xbox Game Studios. That's going to be crazy. Because um, that's going to happen. So that's pretty funny, but pretty neat. Yeah, the uh, yeah that whole cross-progression conversation is something that I think needs to get some more traction because I would be buying two copies of games if that was available for a lot of games that are on both consoles. I, that would be awesome. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if that happens. Um, I have a feeling it's not, but at the same time, who knows, maybe if the uh, some of the Xbox technology moves over to the Switch that has been rumored for some time, um, we'll see if that's even a possibility. But um, good thing there. So another uh, fun, this is a little bit of nostalgia coming back at us, but Ghostbusters, the video game, which was initially on the 360 and PlayStation 3, if I'm not mistaken, yep. uh, back in 2009, um, is getting the remaster treatment. Um, let's see, it's going to be hitting on October 4th. So if you didn't get to play this game, if you are a big Ghostbusters fan, this was reviewed relatively well, actually. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I did play about half the game. I didn't finish it, though. Um, but if you love this franchise, I think it's a must pick up. It's only 30 bucks too, so you're not paying full price for the remaster. Now, keep in mind, it is a remaster, not a remake. So um, you're just going to be getting the nicer graphics. But from the trailer that we actually have up on Season Gaming, um, it looks relatively good. Um, I think it looks like a lot of fun. I, um, I, didn't, I didn't even read into this one. Is this um, going to be couch co-op as well as online co-op? Uh, co or what are we looking at for this one? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, um, so it it's all... Sorry, let me back up. It is single player only for the story. Um, the online co-op for the multiplayer was actually like a separate mode, which had independent missions that you could do that had different objectives. And that is being rebuilt from the ground up, they said, and will be released in the future for free for all uh, players. 
but the actual story mode, um, which by the way was uh, helped to be written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, which is why this is important, because at the time, this was considered like the next Ghostbusters story after Ghostbusters 2. Um, that is single player only. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in this. Uh, you know, Harold Ramis is no longer with us, which is a, a shame. Um, and this is one of the very, very few things out of the two movies, uh, outside of the two movies, that actually includes all four people. So it has all four Ghostbusters as voice actors. Like you said, they helped write it. The story is actually pretty cool, like you would expect from the movie. And uh, it's just, it's, it's pretty well done. I had a lot of fun with it back in 2009, and uh, I'll definitely be picking this up just for nostalgia. Yeah, I'll give it a shot for, you know, 30 bucks. You know, why not? I mean, I like the Ghostbusters. Um, <laughs> I never played the original, so it'll be kind of like a new experience for me. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Yep. So cool one there. Um, like I said, if, if you like the Ghostbusters franchise, this is a must pick up in my opinion. So uh, give this one a look. Um, another one that's uh, for a game that's coming out here this fall is uh, Gears Five. We actually had it on our on our site. There was a leaked image that came out for a controller that's coming out. It's the Gears 5 controller. Um, has received some mixed opinions online and wasn't as nice as some of the other Gears controllers that we've seen in the past. But it does have a bit of like a metal finish looking to it. Um, I guess there's some like what looks like rivets maybe at the bottom of the controller. Um, in some pictures I've seen what looks like some blue joysticks and other ones it looks like just a black joystick. I'm not sure what the official one is but um, I think I'm going to grab this one. Um, I, I happen to be just a controller freak about stuff. I just love picking them up. Um, but I don't know yet. I want to see more of it just to see if I like it a lot. Like I said, it's not my favorite controller that I've seen from, from the Xbox teams. Yeah, this was interesting. Um, we put this up. We actually leaked this, I think, before any other major site. We got a ton of hits on it. And um, you point that out. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's pointing uh, if you can uh, no see God. that obviously um, but yeah I, I think it is blue Bert it's blue underneath the joysticks there and the design is actually uh, supposed to be the Gears 5 version uh, reminiscent of the Gears 4 version for JD so JD there was a JD controller with Gears 4 that was blue and in a similar design and this is supposed to be the white kind of ice themed one for Gears 5 for Kate. So I agree with you. I'm not overly impressed by the controller. Um, I like it, but I don't. I wasn't blown away. But just being the Gears fanatic I am, I'll, I'll be picking it up, of course. Yeah. And the controller gear stand, I'm assuming. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. So I can match my other Gears one over there. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty controllered out at this point. <laughs> so I'm, I'm good. But um, it's great for Gears fans. Um, I'm glad they're, you know, at least getting something. It'd be nice to seem like a. a limited edition console or something. Yes, you know? damn you know, it. I mean, I, I really, you know, they've done such good ones in the past, and I feel like they're just kind of, yeah, I'm looking uh, at like well, a I'm pointing, it doesn't help anyone at all, no. but, you know, the Gears 4 custom Xbox One S that has the claw marks right. on it and the Omen, why didn't they just make a white one with blue for the Ice Omen and, like, recreate it? Dude, it would have been hot. It would have been amazing. I, I don't know. I mean, they, they're doing, they do a big purple one for Fortnite for some reason. <laughs> I guess that's easy. You just kind of, you know, you're missing out, man. I need some new consoles. I would have bought one already. I wonder if they're just waiting for uh, Scarlet at this point. Because yeah. you know they're going to have a Halo Scarlet, which... Oh, for sure. It's going to be... But then again, I thought, you know, maybe they have a Gears one, too. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, we'll uh, see. What do you... Have, have you guys seen the uh, the Fortnite controller? I actually kind of like the look I of it I love quite purple. A bit. I love the color of it. Yeah. I think it looks really nice. I, I actually just, couldn't tell if you were being sarcastic. No, I'm sure. That's like my favorite color. It's purple. No, it, it looks awesome. And if that Xbox One S that they released was an X, I probably would have picked that up yeah. and, you know, given my Scorpio to one of the other kids. Um, but I, I love that color. I didn't, my, my custom controller from the, uh, whatever, the creative controller thing they have is purple and green. Design Lab. Design Lab, yeah. Um, yeah, so, Ains, have you really have you like seen it. it? I'm assuming you have. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not a huge purple fan, so I think it's cool though. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of people. I saw a lot of people right. posting about it, and it's cool that they released the controller separately from the console because yes. originally it was just the console bundle, but now that you can get the controller too, right. so pretty cool. Yep. So a lot of controllers always come out from Microsoft. Um, like I said, we'll we'll see more what this one actually looks like up close and personal. Um, I think some of us may get it, maybe maybe not. I don't know. So. 
All right, the next one, which is a big thing that a lot of us were looking forward to, is the Call of Duty Modern Warfare multiplayer trailer. So um, previously they had leaked out, or I shouldn't even say leaked, they, they mentioned the gunfight mode that they have, which is the 2v2 uh, play. Um, and now they've released a trailer that has a lot more multiplayer going on. Um, I every, every time they release something new for this game, I get more and more excited. Um, so this game, I'm highly excited for it. I can't wait to see some more campaign stuff for it as well. The campaign's been one of the most talked about things from the media that actually got to see some of it. But this multiplayer looks really, really cool. I, I actually can't wait for this game. I've already pre-ordered it and everything, and I don't usually pre-order Call of Duty games. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Um, I, I said the same thing before. I'm not the biggest Call of Duty fan, but this is definitely going to be up there for me. Uh, in fact, as you're listening to this, um, we have put up a leak of a whole bunch of the information for multiplayer. It seems valid from what I can tell of the sources, so um, you can find that on the site as you're reading this, but some of the details are really neat, um, including the fact that um, there should be about 15 multiplayer maps, standard multiplayer maps at launch, and that they're moving away. I know we've talked about this a lot, Bert. They're moving away from the three-lane design and instead trying to make maps that nice. are more realistic. Um, there's going to be up to 100 plus player big team battles. Uh, they've mentioned drivable tanks. Uh, there's just a whole bunch that seems to be going the way that we have really wanted Call of Duty to go for years now. So very, very excited. I actually yep. pre-ordered yesterday, um, which I can't remember the last time I pre-ordered a Call of Duty game. It's been a long time. So looking forward to it. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to be playing the campaign. <laughs> that's going to be Dan. Hey, you're playing, you're, we agreed on this already. You're playing the 2v2 mode with Bert, and I'm just going to watch. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> oh, my God. Be, gosh, you Bert will be so mad and like after the first match. Oh. I'm done. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. Either, that, either that or you're going to get mad, Dan, and you're just going to go on mute. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's definitely a possibility. I think both. Both yeah. is probably the answer. Yeah. Something, something you know, controller is going through something at some point. I'm sure. Controller's going. Yeah. <laughs> then again, you, you don't see who we play PUBG with a lot, so you yeah. know we're kind of used to it at this point. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> no, that wasn't. Right, you. So that's pretty. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I, I think you'd laugh at some of our PUBG um, exploiting fun that we do quite a bit. Oh. So um, it is what it is. But uh, that person actually has Call of Duty reserves. So. <laughs> I'll probably be playing Call of Duty with them. Um, the funny thing is they're what you call a camper in the Call of Duty world. Um, I have a feeling this new game will not lend itself well to camping just based on the, the modes that we've seen. And so even maybe more reason why I won't play it. <laughs> I am a total camper. Yeah. Well, he likes to play Call of Duties from like three years ago and then just plays that one over and over. So I would like to see what happens with this one. <laughs> so. Anyways, um, good news from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Um, do we have a release date for that game? Yeah, off October the 23rd or 6th, one of the two. 3rd or 6th, okay. So, right around the corner. Um, actually, here it is, October 25th. Yeah, like I said. Found it, yeah. <laughs> Either the 23rd or 25th. <laughs> It'll definitely be out the 25th. I was in the vicinity. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're right there. So, right around the corner. Um, okay, let's talk about some other things that happen at the beginning of every month. We have our games release for games with gold and playstation plus so playstation plus is getting the wipeout collection and also sniper elite 4 a uh, really quick thing there that's pretty cool is if you do have a playstation vr the wipeout vr mode is free so you can always play that and from what i've seen from a lot of people the vr mode's a lot of fun for wipeout and with games with gold obviously they still do the 360 titles that have now been backwards compatible onto the xbox one and your xbox one titles we have gears 4 as we were just talking about gears 4 which is actually a great game get you ready for gears 5. forza 6 which actually a lot of people tend to like more than forza 7. Um, and then we have torchlight which was a very fun game and then one of my favorite castlevania games of the entire franchise is going to be coming out as well, which is Lords of Shadow, and that's the first one. The second one was not as well received as the first, but still a decent game. But um, are you guys grabbing all these? Do you have all these already? What are y'all doing here? Yeah, I pretty much have them all. I, I have Sniper Elite 4 for the Xbox, but I'll pick it up on the PlayStation. Wipeout and VR. I feel like that was a dumb question to Dan. Yeah, I mean, it's a stupid question, Bert, really. I mean, we need to step our game up here. Um, Wipeout in VR is really, really cool. Also, 
if you get motion sickness at all, you <laughs> really, really need to watch it because, man, that game did a number on my stomach. But it's super fun. And Wipeout is one of those games from way back when yep. it was the PS1. PS1, yeah. And, gosh, it was one of my favorite games, one of my favorite racing games. Um, as far as the Xbox Ones goes, I have all of those except for Castlevania, so I'll pick that one up. Torchlight is super fun. Yep. I love that game. I think Torchlight 2 is coming out yep. soon, so I'll be picking that one up for sure, too. Because yeah. of reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, great month for both. I like these. I have almost all of them, too. I don't have Wipeout, though, so I'm looking forward to trying that VR mode, which will be cool. Uh, Torchlight I love. I'm a massive Torchlight fan. I actually played the hell out of uh, Torchlight 1, and then Torchlight 2 was PC only. Uh, way back, I want to say it released in 2013, if memory serves, and I played the hell out of it on PC. Uh, fantastic ARPG. So I, at the time, I still remember posting on those runic forums saying, why the hell is Torchlight 2 not on Xbox and PlayStation? Um, so it's great that it's finally coming six years later. Yeah, well, they did a good job porting it over to the first one. I mean, I, the I, first I, one was really good. Yeah, yeah I mean, Torchlight thought... 2 is way bigger. Like, yeah, it's... much bigger game. It's right. like Diablo 3. Good. So, so there's more. Uh, games I can play. Yeah, it's got a cool art style. Um, tons of loot, though, is what I love. Tons and tons and tons and tons of loot. Uh, really good ARPG. So, and I and Torchlight Two is coming for nineteen ninety nine. So, I mean, it's a no brainer. Punch me. Um, yeah, good month for both. Yep. So grab those if you haven't. Um, obviously, with the Xbox games, some of those last and they bleed into the next month. I believe it's uh, is it Forza that's uh, bleeding into the next month, if I'm not mistaken, or is it Gears? Um, let me double check here before we get too far just for people yeah while you're looking that it's pretty cool xbox been doing this recently where they get you ready for new releases right yeah. so gears 4 is free before yep. gears 5 torchlight 1 is free before torchlight 2 they've been doing that pretty frequently with games i think that's a really cool idea that makes sense yeah and here's the details uh which is kind of a cool thing so gears 4 is available august 1st through the 31st forza 6 is available the 16th of august through september 15th so you have it for those 30 days uh, Torchlight, August 1st through the 15th, and um, let's see, Castlevania, 16th through the 31st. Uh, PlayStation Plus does it a little bit different. They start a little bit later in the month. They're starting on the 6th of August through the uh, 2nd of September. So in case you're wondering why those are not available today, if that was one of those, that's why. So um, last story here, guys, um, or actually let me uh, jump. There's one more that I uh, added later on, was the latest iteration of Need for Speed is rumored to be coming out at GamesCon. Uh, GamesCon starts August 20th, so um, I'm not sure if we're the biggest Need for Sp uh, Speed fans here. It's changed a lot throughout its uh, years that it's been out, and the most recent titles have been kind of lackluster in my opinion. Uh, but the rumored title name here is Need for Speed Heat, um, and we haven't seen a Need for Speed for two years now. So maybe they've been working on this one for a while. Um, I just want to see what it is, if it's another maybe change that they're doing or something. I, I don't really know, but... Once again, we should see something around August 20th is when GamesCon uh, starts. It hasn't mentioned if it's on day one, two, three, etc. We don't know anything like that, but this was recently uh, mentioned on an investor's call with EA. So, you guys even care about this one, or is this just uh, cool? Uh, let's, let's move on, or what, what do you guys think? Yeah, pretty much the latter. Um, Need for Speed, I haven't really been interested in in many years. This would have to do something really special for me to, to show any interest. Um, there's just too many incredible games coming this fall for me to be interested in this personally plus it'll be free on ea access next year anyway so yeah. i'll just wait never ever 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 buy a need for speed game at <laughs> launch at launch i did that with the last one and i felt violated to be 100 percent uh honest with you I, I i don't know what to say uh i played it for three hours and I wanted to punch myself in the face. Um, it was, when you play games like Forza or, you know, what was the other one for the, the GT Sport mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and you, you see these and how gorgeous these games can be and how much, I, I know this is more arcadey, you know, it's definitely more, you know, Fast and Furious, mm -hmm. and that's what I was kind of looking for, and I think that's what they were trying to go for, and they went the complete opposite direction. It was so bad. Sorry for any of you Need for Speed fans. I have very, very strong feelings on this game because I feel like that 60 bucks could have been donated to any any charity and and done a whole lot better. I'm sure EA did a whole lot of good with your $60. Yeah. Yes, they, I'm sure they did. They knew what they didn't do, yeah. ported it over to the Switch. So <laughs> you'll never be able to play it there. So. Yeah, all right. So that's yeah. my Need for Speed, right? Sorry. 
Yeah, it's funny because um, Need for Speed, like as Aiden said, hasn't been good for, gosh, five plus years or something like that. And um, if you have EA Access, you know, maybe try out the trial um, to see if that even interests you. But man, I, I tried the most recent Need for Speed from 2017 when it became free on EA Access. And I was kind of like, how was this available to go out to gamers? And, you know, the Horizon franchise has pretty much raised the bar so high for that kind of an arcade exactly. racer that you really have to do something different in order to be even decent um, at this point. And they need to go back to the drawing board from scratch and do something different. Maybe they need to bring back a better way of doing the cops chasing you, or I don't even know. But um, we'll see if Heat is any good, if it interests people at all. That's uh, rumored to be coming out later this month as far as a trailer or some kind of announcement about it. It could even just be a banner or something. I mean, we, don't, we have no idea, but that's rumored to be coming out. Um, the last piece, and wanted to have a short discussion on this, is uh, so Crash Team Racing had an update that came through. Um, they introduced a new track. So first of all, if you're into Crash Team Racing, there was an update that came through. One of the uh, negatives, I guess, that we've seen across the industry is the addition of microtransactions. And not just the fact that Crash Team Racing is getting them way after launch, but also the fact that we've seen this happen with a number of games recently where they'll launch without microtransactions. The game looks pretty bare with, you know, the features you can do with either, you know, Call of Duty uniforms, gun skins, whatever the case is. Same with racers. And then down the line, two, three months down the line, they introduce the microtransactions in mass. So Call of Duty is super guilty for this. It drives me nuts that, you know, you start a game out that looks pretty serious with the World War II skins and everything, and all of a sudden later, you go back and now there's people in Halloween costumes and, you know, firefighter outfits that just look super weird. So just really brief here, we don't have to go into super detail, but what are your guys' opinion on that? I mean, do you think it's something that they're doing to intentionally not get hit by review scores or reviewers or introduce someone into buying their game at full price and the second the price drops that they're trying to maybe get some extra cash from microtransactions? I mean, this is kind of shady to me, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, anymore, this is how the games are going. They're trying to, you know, probably make some money back on their initial investment and adding stuff. I mean, I don't even know what they are. Uh, are they just cosmetics? It's all cosmetics and stuff, yeah. It's okay, well then, they're pretty non-predatory, I guess. You know, I'm. it's funny, because I'm not a huge fan of them, but I will buy the hell out of them. I, and I'm patiently waiting for Sea of Thieves <laughs> to open their, their emporium. You know, their, God their, damn it, Dan. I know, man, because I, I don't know why. <laughs> I have so much money. I, there's so much to buy with in-game currency, right? And I still want more stuff. I want pets. I want a lot of other stuff. I still play Sea of Thieves all the time. Played it this week. Pets are But what if... What? What if, like, Anthem... Like, let, let's talk about Anthem for a second. And let's I'm not going to talk about the, the the core of Anthem. But I when I initially was playing with you guys at the start, I remember you, Dan, specifically. There was a specific... Um, uh, skin that you wanted really bad, and I heard you say this like out loud. You're like, man, I really want that skin, but it's ten dollars yes. or something like that. And then the, your your vanilla choices that they give you are so just that vanilla and boring. But they put all the really nice ones behind that paywall, and you're buying a full sixty dollar game. Now, from something like a Fortnite or even like a PUBG that it's so cheap to get into introductory, I don't mind paying the extra cosmetics for stuff like that, or even like an Apex Legends, which is famous for this. But when you're paying full price for a game, it seems like such a cheat to me. I mean, it's such a strange concept. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, like, say, like, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you can go in there and buy yeah. all kinds of stuff. Now, some of that stuff is actually, <laughs> I mean, I want to say worth it, but you can, you can actually, it actually benefits you from getting it. You can, you can get the costumes and the armor, but those are all rated at whatever level you yep, purchase. You can buy them. XP boost, too. And you can, yeah, you can buy XP boost yeah. and money boost. I know someone that did that. Yep, not <clears> that. I don't know someone that did the It's like 10 bucks. So it helped, it definitely helped with the grind. <laughs> and I'm, I'm okay with that because there's so many games, you know, and and it's just, there's so much to play. I, I never understood the cosmetic thing until I started buying all the cosmetic things. <laughs> and I was like, man, this looks cool. I really want that. But, I, you know, I, I did. When we played Anthem, I bought $50 worth of the coins. I said, this is, oh, this is what I'm, no, I said, this is all I'm going to buy. Uh, Hold on. I haven't spent hardly any of them. I still, they're just sitting on my account right now <laughs> because I left the game and the game left me. So, <laughs> you know what, Anthem? Bio, so, oh, Dan, just, just to has confirm what out. I heard yes. you say. Yep. Just to confirm what I just heard you say, you bought $50 in yeah, skins. Just a coin. No, I didn't buy any 60 skins. bucks for the game. Yes. 
in-game currency. Oh. I did. I, so you paid $110 for Anthem. God damn it, yes. Dan. So, not more than that, because I bought the deluxe edition. But um, <laughs> here's the thing. Like, I'll, I'll, that's what I, I've kind of reined myself in as of recent. I'll, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I'm going to buy one pack of these things. And you know who else does it? The Division 2. They had a whole, you know, they every like two weeks they release like new yeah, apparel kind of caches. Ubi, Ubisoft does a lot in all their yeah, games. Yeah, a lot of them. And, and it's it, like, it's like, man, I really, really want to have those cut off jean shorts and, <laughs> and uh, you know, America boots mm-hmm. with, the, with the cool cowboy hat and awesome sunglasses. And so you pretty much have to buy everything <laughs> just because it's a random chance. You can't just buy the damn thing uh, outright. Some of the stuff you can, but man, he loves yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm I'm definitely more on the side of if it's a full price game, adding full price cosmetics is is shady. Um, I probably agree that there's no way that they released the game and then suddenly thought, okay, let's develop a system for microtransactions oh. and crash team racing. This was planned, right? Um, so. Yeah, it's it's shady. It probably avoids the negative connotation prior to launch, and then you can secretly, you know, get four million people to buy your game, and then it's like, oh, by the way, now you can buy this stuff. So, yeah, I don't like it. Um, I already sold my copy of that game anyway. Um, but in general, I, I try to stay away from buying that kind of stuff unless it's a game I really know I'm going to play like endlessly, um, right. and it's something I really want. Uh, yeah. Or typically, I'll I'll do it if I feel I need to support the developers. Like Apex is a good example, Bert. So Apex is free, very polished game, beautiful, love um, respawn. Yeah, I bought the Battle Pass. I think I bought I bought uh, one of the bundle things you could buy. I forget what it was now, but stuff like that. I really try to be picky and choosy with what I spend my money on in that regard. Yeah, I, 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 choosy. choosy. Choosy, picky. Uh, like uh, Smite, Smite's another good example. Oh, you know, they, it's too. a free game. Um, they they get all their money from gems, which you buy skins with, and they have tons of crazy skins. And I have a ton of them. Um, I've probably spent, you know, it's a free game, but over I've been playing that game for five years now, and I've probably spent I would guess maybe a hundred to one hundred twenty bucks on it. Um, but you got to remember, I have like nine hundred hours in that game. So I mean, the you know the cost to benefit of what they've provided me, I feel is worth it. You know, that, that's a good point, and I think I remember seeing some a little bit of research done on if you have a free game and you just charge for that kind of stuff, in the long run, um, you end up making more money by introducing it as a free title because it's in more people's hands than it is for charging that price and then charging microtransactions. So um, I wonder if there's been any long-term research on that just to kind of see what that actually ends up being. But I think that would be something to think about in the future and where gaming would go um, to where just the introductory software, uh, you know, everybody can have it, but... I don't know. I think it obviously is going to depend on the genre of the game. Yeah. Um, and, so. and, and a good example here is Gears 5. So Gears 5 system that's coming out, the season pass is free. Well, not season pass, but just, you know, all the updates are free um, for everyone. And then they're going to have what they called a something of war system, basically where you can unlock. It's going to be like seasons in some of the other games, but you can unlock every single cosmetic for free if you play enough. You know, it's one of the things where if you play a ton, you're going to unlock it anyway. But if there's something you want right away or you just play casually and you're not going to play enough to unlock it, you can you can buy it with real money. Yeah, they may. Yep. Just send them to my house <laughs> and do the research. But, I mean, I like that because that, that way you're not sitting there playing Gears, a dedicated player like me who's going to play hundreds of hours of Gears and be like, well, I don't have that cosmetic because that was real money only for five bucks. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pathetic. <laughs> well, good – yeah, good discussion, guys. I just Thanks wanted to great, bounce Bert. it off your heads because I was just, yeah, I was just thinking about it, and I was like, I feel like a lot of developers are just, uh, re- you know, removing the microtransaction side just to avoid the negative, you know, feedback from reviewers or something, or just that average gamer that doesn't know and they see microtransaction and boom, they avoid it. But I don't know. It's becoming more and more common. Um, we'll see what it turns into as the gaming industry always kind of evolves in different ways, but. We'll see. So, um, do wanted to touch on some games that are coming out in August. We briefly touched on some ones that were right around the corner. Uh, the end of the month is going to be really crazy um, for August. So, it's kind of slow at the beginning of August. We have Blair Witch that does come out uh, mid month, if I'm not August mistaken. August 30th. At the end of the month, August too. 30th. Oh, jeez. Jeez. That's even crazier. Yep. 
Um, if you were thinking you had some downtime before the fall, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> so just to give you guys a heads up, August between August 27th and August 30th, we have Control, which is uh, you know from Remedy. A lot of people are excited about that one. They're looking forward to it. We've got Wreckfest, which was, funny enough, one of our most viewed videos from, from E3. E3. Um, collection of Mana. So if you were into the Mana games from back in the day, the RPGs, that's going to be a great one if you have been following that one. Man of Medan, um, have we've kind of seen um, the trailers. is supposed to be the scariest game out. The follow-up to Until Dawn, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And then they have a series of uh, games coming out from there. Uh, as I just mentioned, and Ains mentioned and clarified, Blair Witch, which is something that I'm pro- out of all these games, it's funny enough, the one I'm the most excited for. Yep. Um, Astral Chain coming to um, the Switch. So if you like the Nier Automata games and uh, the games that come from that developer, Astral Chain looks fantastic. So, like I said, if you thought you had a break, you don't before fall comes, but you've got plenty to play. You should not be bored as a gamer right now, and if you are, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so. Um, let's talk about what we're playing. So we've been super busy with life, I guess you could call it. So some of us haven't had a ton of time to play. Dan, I know you've been super busy with life as well, but let's start out with you. You've, you've got some fun games that you've been super excited for. What are you up to? Yeah, I've been, you know, aside from the ones there, I've been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves and I've actually got back into Division as well. Division nice. 2. Um, I played, uh, some of the new stuff. It's super fun. It's you know, really cool. You know, like the zoo is really cool. Um, uh, they added a lot of stuff. They really, really did a tune up on the skills and stuff. So that was nice, nice to see. Um, <clears throat> so it's still awesome. Still love that game. Um, been playing Madden, uh, the new one. It's the same as normal, <laughs> but it's it's still Madden. So I love it. I love football. I love playing. This it's, is how out of touch I am with Madden. I didn't even know it was out yet. Yeah. It came out. Yesterday. I think it's for the advance, the advanced version, right? For the people that have the full deluxe version. Also? No, it came out yesterday or August first. Is oh, okay. Right. Yeah, is when the regular version came out. The other ones had a three day. You had a three day. Uh, and you're access. a Bears fan, if I recall. I am a Bears fan. So in Kansas City. In Kansas. For City. shame. Yes. Sorry, my homes. Um, <laughs> I would love to have you on our team, but it is what it is. But it, it's fun. Um, I really want to try out the new uh, the single player mode. And see how that is. Um, I heard it was pretty good, so we're gonna see uh, probably this week. And then every other waking moment has been Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and I never. I, I love like XCOM games. I love RPG games. Not a huge anime fan. However, this game is awesome. So it kind of combines that RPG and uh, uh, XCOM, you know, tactical you know, movement stuff. It's really, really good. Um, I'm, I'm only just scratched the surface, I think. Um, but I can't put it down. I keep thinking about it and I really want to go play it right now, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's one of those games I never thought I would really get into too much. And now it's just taking over. It's got so, you. It's got me, man. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I have played next to nothing, guys. Um, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, uh, I'm getting ready to go on vacation, a long vacation, and so my work, my week work was crazy, and I'm actually only home one week in August, so I'm basically going to be all over the place and traveling, so I need to find something to play on the Switch to take with me, something new, because I, be, I beat Zelda, Zelda now. Fire Emblem just didn't seem to be up my alley, but I'm, mm. I'm hearing such good things about it, like you just said. I don't know. Maybe I will, but yeah. Anyway, um, you know, we're still playing PUBG. That season of PUBG finishes tomorrow, uh, as you're listening to this, probably. It's finished. And season four is coming, so I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, I am playing Days Gone still. I just haven't had any time and likely won't soon. So by the time I get back in August, as you said, you've got all these new games um, that I'm super excited about. Uh, Man of Badon and Blair Witch in particular. Just love horror games, so pump for those. <laughs> yeah, the two that I have no desire to <laughs> Actually, I, I was looking at the list, and I'm like, I know you really want a Nashville chain. Yeah, and, and Control. And Control, and I, I'm definitely buying Wreckfest, Man of Madonna, and Blair Witch, so we'll we'll be covering everything. Yeah, we'll have everything covered. So One interesting thing before you go, Bert, is uh, I just read yesterday, Man of Madon has 69 total possible character deaths. Um they said it's like eight times more extensive than um, than um, until, dawn, until dawn. dawn. Yeah, and to actually see them all, you'd have to do like six playthroughs or something. So sounds really, really Holy cool. Crap. 
sounds really, really gross <laughs> and scary. Yeah, the funny thing is uh, I played Until Dawn only once, um, and I've heard many times that you have to go back and intentionally try to trigger the other story elements that happen just to get the full experience of it. So I might do that before. Um, I mean, it's not that long of a game anyways, no, so no. Um, I'm, I might try it out just to see those. So I play them with, I play um, with my wife, and I make her make the decisions. So, like, I play, that's how I did and Detroit. then, like, as the decision has to be made. I'm like, quick, hurry up, and then we watch people die. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with watching Sean. It's, it's, got, uh, it's got Rami Malek, too. I mean, Academy Award winner Rami He's Malek. He's in it, too? So... It's a big production, oh, and, 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 and Sean Ashmore was he, in it. He's in Until Dawn, and it's a, oh, he's in Until yeah. Dawn. It's a start. Uh, Man of Madonna is a start of an anthology too. It's the first story in a horror anthology. Yeah, sounds terrible. Yep. <laughs> I mean, literally, yeah, it's like the Until worst Dawn thing had. Until Dawn had a uh, Hayden Panettiere oh, too. Yeah. She was the other yeah. big name in there, and she was massive at the time that game came out. Now she's kind of disappeared as far as from Hollywood, but. Um, really, really fun game, Dan. If you never played, I thought you did play it like all the way through. Maybe you stopped. No, it's not through. even scary. Well, I'll play it then. It's not. It's well, not like playing a normal like, horror game. It's more just a inter- interactive story. All right, maybe yeah. I'll try it because <laughs> I don't have anything and, else. And it's to got. Play. It's got a. It's got Peter Stormare as your as the host of the game, who's he's one of my oh, favorite right, actors from right, a fun perspective, um, and he's awesome in it. So, he's a, Peter Stormare, I'll, I'll send you a picture. He's like a narrator. He was not in Mortal Kombat, Dan. Yeah, you go back and he narrates certain parts of the story. It's pretty cool. I'll give you my disc, you know, so you can I've, take that home and play. I've got the game. Oh, well, I should, that was stupid. <laughs> yeah, it was free on PS Plus. I got it for nothing. Free game. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, I'll, I'll just be really quick, and then we'll jump to name that game and then wrap it up as we're running kind of late. But um, I'm playing Yakuza 0 still. Funny enough, that game starts really damn slow, like slow to the point that where I had to stop it numerous times. But now it has picked up, and it's become awesome. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm glued to that. Um, Dan, I don't know how well you remember the game, but I'm finishing up Goro's Story Points. Sure. So uh, uh, he's, he's fantastic. Um, the, man, man. the game's great. Love that guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm and I also, see, um, I'm interested to see, Bert, if okay. after you play that game, how invested you are in, you know, Kiru, and and if you want to keep going and see, you know, see his story. Because that's what kind of got me after that. I was like, man, I have to play yeah. one. No, it's play planned. Two. You know, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Just watching him develop throughout the series. I wish the other ones were released so I can go back and play them. But um, eventually, hopefully. Yeah, I have Kiwami downloaded already. Nice. Um, so the second I finish Zero, I'll be playing Kiwami. And then hopefully Kiwami 2 will be somewhere uh, discounted pretty good. I think I saw the low of 19 bucks already, so I'll pick that up. Once I finish those games up, but not before. I've learned to not buy as much software at the start and wait till I can play them. You save a lot of money that way as, lo- as much yeah, as I have. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to turn it over to Ains. Um, you are hosting Name That Game for us this week. Uh, let's see how we do. So first... Actually, you, you, you know what, Ains? Let's let's flip it because Dan hasn't had a chance to go first in a while because yes. he hasn't hosted as much. But let's. I'm going to give it to Dan this time. All right, he's done. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, so our well, usual kind of first hint. I'm going to use, use my first question. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this, was, this was released for the PS2 at the end of 2002 in Europe and early 2003 in the U.S. and Japan. Sonic. Come on. I, I mean, how the hell do you get anything from that? There's nobody... At least guess a PS2 game. I mean, there was a PS2 Sonic game. <laughs> I mean... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it'd be super specific. I don't know. Maybe. There's like 50 Sonic games. I'm actually yeah. going to pick a rare one one of these days. I already said I was going to do that. I was going <laughs> to just pick one, and then you got, that's all you would have to get. I would give you no clues, and you would just you would have 20, basically 20 guesses. Maybe 24 now. I don't know. All right. All right. It's I'm, not Sonic. I'm going to guess, I'm, I'm gonna guess uh, Winback. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's not it. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> It, it, it's a shooter game. Okay, damn it. Well, how do I not know it? Shit. Wait back. <laughs> All right. All right. This title began life as a PlayStation 1 title, but due to technical limitations and a scope that was too ambitious, it had to be released on the PS2 years later. Uh, how about Klonoa? 
<laughs> no, I do know that game, but no. <laughs> you're getting way out there. That sounds like a. Yeah, my game, my game weird. is definitely more well known than these games you're talking about. What did he say? Yes. Kelowna. Klonoa. 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 That's a great yeah. game. I've yeah. never played it, and it sounds like something. It's not that's as good wrong as that Oh no! Nothing <laughs> as good as that. <laughs> Sounds like, oh man, Dan, what ask a question. Yeah, ask a question. Yeah, what the hell am I going to ask? Clonona. Come on. Uh, so, it was supposed to be released on the PS1, but it was released on the PS2. Oh uh, man, I don't know. Maximo 2, the Maximoist. <laughs> No. no idea. So do we have to wait? Do we have to wait till our turn to ask the question, or can we ask the question anytime you want? Anytime. Just throw it out there. Okay, I got a question. Sure. Remember, it has to be yes. Is no. this game? Yep. <laughs> what is, is the title this game, of the game considered in the top 100 games of all time? Oh, that's by, a, by who's standard? Yeah, I was gonna say that's an opinion. So, um, well, I mean, was, was it on the list? I mean, that's gotta be in there. I. I I honestly can't say, but I'll say this in response. It's definitely one of the more well-known PS2 games. Fantastic. So okay. if you were to say, like, what All are right. the best 50 games on PS2, I think it would be in there for sure. Okay, so yes. Okay. Go ahead. It's, I think you're on the next clue. Yep. Um, so it was released in the same time frame as Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which, due to its style, ended up hurting its sales, particularly in the Jeez. U.S. Oh, oh, damn it. Damn it. Oh, maybe not. Can't be it. That was the third question, which means we are on Dan first, right? Yeah. Oh, it's me? Yep. Okay. Um, damn. Shit. State of emergency. That's all I got. No, but at least that's a PS2 game. <laughs> I'd like to make my... What was the guess? I, I didn't State hear of emergency. emergency. <laughs> State of emergency. That was good. I love that game. I'm gonna go with Saints Row One. That's a good guess. No, me. that was a that was an interesting game at the time. Um, I think that was 360. I yeah, think it was PS2. Was it? Was it already 360? Yeah, I think, Damn but it. That's okay. okay. All right. Uh, fourth clue. Just I've got them in a weird order here, so I'm trying to figure out which one to say. Um. Mm -hmm. The game features both real gun models and real car models uh, and attempted to have an approach that was more like a movie. Damn it. Dang it, I feel like I should know this. Me too. Uh, Pursuit Force. Uh, no, what? no, but yes, you, you should have this one. You will definitely get it in time for sure. Mafia. Okay. No, but good guess as well. Amazing game. Awesome game. <clears throat> Okay. I didn't know if that was on PS2 or not. So, this game, this is an interesting fact, but it may also help a bit. It was funded by Sony to mm. counter the Dreamcast Metropolis Street Racer because Metropolis Ooh. Street Racer was being hyped as a big new exclusive that recreated real parts of a city. And Sony wanted to counter that. Like, like when, you, when I figure this out, I'm going to be so mad because... I feel like I should know this. You both, I'm telling you, you both I know, know this game. I, I, I for sure this know this game. This is not a gauntlet again. I don't know how you didn't yeah, fucking know that one. That's but, bullshit. You know. All right. Uh, is four? Is there a is this bird? Or me? No, it's, no, it's, it's bird. It's easy too, Dan. But ask a question, goddammit. Well, I, I don't know what to ask. That's the problem. What question are we on? Four? We're on four. It's you, man. I've got them out of order here. I think it's actually... No, you're right. I think it is four. Yeah, yeah it's you. No, no, you you just guess. It's your guess. No, 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 this is the fifth hype. Fifth oh, fifth one. Yeah. No, it's the fifth one. Okay, so it's me. Uh, shit. I feel like I know I've played this game. I know I have. Because of Metropolis Street Racer. Hmm. Arr! Question. I'm, sure. Uh... Can't I can't, I can't make me think question. of Corky Romano. Question, 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 question. question. No, question. Not, I'm trying to, I was thinking of something else. Um, okay. Is the developer for this game still around, making games? Ooh. Um, shit. 
Uh-oh. Good, good question. I didn't even hear the question. Okay, the, you okay, okay, so I asked if the developer who made this game is still around making games. Checking. No. Yeah, Bear question. with me. Good question. I think so, but let me double check. This is a stalling tactic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't, yeah, it's fine. can't think of it, man. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm just double to show you know, I don't want to give you the wrong info. Bear with me. Probably. I think they can. Game. Oh, yes, absolutely. They are. In fact, they created. Uh, don't, don't say it. No, no, no. I'm just saying, yes, absolutely. They are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this will be funny when I. Uh, I'll mention that later. I've got a question. I'm, I'm using my second question before now. I, before I guess. Yeah, you can do that. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Is it a racer? tough um it, no because it's not a simple yes no um let's say that it does have car racing elements yes yeah. okay uh, car racing elements you'll you'll know what i mean by that when you figure the game out yeah give us a guess dan mafia 2 oh. I, mean, I got nothing man i mean it, it's <laughs> i'm just wasting time here i don't want this thing no, you're fine you're good you got anything Bert? Yeah, I'm gonna throw just something random out there. Burnout, burnout one. No, good guess though. You guys are you guys are honing in on it. All right. Question six or statement six. The story, uh, yes, the story follows two main characters with separate storylines that event that are in parallel and eventually collide into one another later in the game. Now, after yeah, this, man, they like it starts to get a little more specific, I think, but. Wanted to throw that one out there. I feel like I should know this game. I know, man. Um, this is driving me crazy. <laughs> it's like right there on the tip of my tongue. And I don't know. Well, you're, you guys are down. Three out of four <laughs> questions already, too. I was going to say, this isn't the Matrix video game, is that's it? Fantastic. Well, you already used your question, so I can't answer that. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's, that, that, that's, that's my guess. guess. No, it's not. That's no. A, yeah, okay. Dang it. Uh, I would say... Two separate characters that eventually come together to form Voltron. <laughs> uh, Constructicon. Yeah, Constructor. I don't know, man. I'm just gonna say I'll just say Kane and Lynch so we can move on. Okay, all direction. right, all right, here we go, here we go. The game <clears throat> attempted to recreate 70 square miles of London, but in the end, due to technical limitations, as I referenced earlier, it was actually only able to recreate about ten. Oh my god! Uh, I have an idea, but I don't think it's right. You need to get this because it's gonna drive me nuts. You guys will get it, I think. Uh, the heist? I don't know. No, but you're, you're 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 there. You're uh, in the ballpark. I know. I, I'm trying to. You guys like, are. You're actually it, guys are on the lower level now. I'm trying to put it together. Is I, it? It's, um, it's right here. Oh, is it the getaway? The getaway. God damn it! That's exactly what popped in my head. Literally right after. I was like, God damn it. I was like, oh, you fucking son of a bitch. There it is. Yeah, I'll take that, that, that game. That was a good game. That, it, I was going to say the getaway or driver. Yeah, I yeah. figured, I figured so driver uh, would come up too. That, and then, That's the other one. Jeez. I was going to say uh, the other ones were used mechanics from Porsche Challenge. Yeah, and it was one of the yeah. earliest free roaming vehicle games. Yeah. Um, developed by SCE London, who made Blood and Truth. You're there. I just looked oh, it up. That's crazy. They made Blood and Truth. And then the other one was... Um, I didn't use this hint, but it was originally banned in Australia uh, due to a torture yeah. scene that they had to be censored. I remember the freaking box art. That's that's what was going through my head. Yeah. Was the box art for the game. I was like, I know this. I just couldn't put it. was either, that's why I said the highest. I was like, I know that's a game. No, and I knew what you meant. Of, yeah, 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 I, I was going meant. towards that. Shit. Good job, Bert. Yeah, nice. I remember the box yeah. art too. It so. came, it came to mind fine. because someone on the PS4 subreddit was talking about how has this never come back? Like, there's, you think yeah. of think of how good of a game you could make with today's technology and the ghetto. And like you said, you know, it being released at the same time by City, I can see totally why it was being yeah. underlooked. But I did play that game, and it was actually a really fun game. So yeah, I'm looking at the box art now. It's got like the whole gang on the front and stuff. Yeah, and mm-hmm. yeah that cool was a, game. That was a fun. So game. I didn't try to trick you guys. See, I kept it good. Yeah, I, I, I mean, literally, if he hadn't guessed it, I really would have had it next time. But he would have had two guesses. Was this one of your clues, Ains? It's inspired by Get Carter and Snatch. No, no, I didn't put that in there. Snatch. No, I would have got it at that point. Snatch is so good. Yep. So, awesome. All right, guys. Well, yeah. 
cool game. Thanks for bringing that one in, Ains. That's a lot of nostalgia for that one. I love that yep. game. Um, up, we're going to go ahead and close our BitCast out for this week, guys. So um, thanks for listening. If you haven't already, some just some housekeeping items, as Ains says. Um, we're going to be suspending BSG for now, guys, just to see if we can maybe revamp the way we do that. So uh, Backseat Gaming um, hasn't taken off as much as we had hoped for, um, and we spent a lot of time on that one together and getting together. So we're going to see if we can revamp the way we do it into a new fun way. Um, add that on top of the fact that Ains is gone for <laughs> like two weeks, and uh, we, we've got stuff coming up that's just going to kind of uh, backseat us for that. Um, oh, boy. That, that segment for a while. For a while. <laughs> so we're doing that. Um, as Ains mentioned, he's going to be out on vacation. So uh, we're going to have a sub next week. We haven't decided who that awesome guest is going to be, but they will, we'll still be doing BitCast. You should still get the delivery of the BitCast at the exact same time. We'll just have it up there for you. All of our news and everything will still be on top of... Uh, on top of the news as it comes if, out, so we'll still have that going. Their name can't be rhymed so. with insider; they're not worthy. Yes, mm. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a video coming out this week for you guys. It's the new pound cable that's coming out for the Sega Genesis, and so what that does is it allows HDMI from the original Sega Genesis console. So that should be out this week. I'll be doing, um, I guess, an unboxing. There's not really much to unbox outside of a cable in a box, but <laughs> um, I'll do some. Yeah, it's kind of the most boring unboxing ever. But um, then I'll be doing some comparisons as to how it works um, and the technology behind it. So expect that from us. Um, anything from you, Ains, before you uh, depart us for a couple weeks? Yeah, well, one, I'm looking forward to that Genesis Pound cable because I love the Genesis, and that would be really cool to be able to use HDMI with the original console I have over there. Um, I am going to be putting up another article uh, next week while I'm gone, um, which is going to look at the best new IPs of this generation. So if you think of the new IPs introduced for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and now the Switch, going to take a look at what those are and what we can expect in the future from them. So look for that. Other than that, I am going to be way away from here and very excited about it. So I will talk to you guys in a couple weeks. Yeah, man. Have fun. Ho ho hoping you disconnect and uh, try to stay away from technology yes, as much as you absolutely. can. absolutely. So, cool. Uh, Dan, anything from you before we uh, close it out? No, I've um, got some things going uh, in my head. So, hopefully I'll be able to put some pen to paper here got it. this week and get a couple things out. Including Madden Incl Review. Including the Madden right. Review. Yeah, I'm going to do a Madden Review. And <laughs> Madden eventually review. a Fire Emblem Review. Yeah, the Madden Review will be very short. Like three it's words. like 19, but name 20. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> We've copied and pasted it from last year, and it's very similar. Very, very similar. Control C, Control V. Right, guys. That's yep. what they're going to rename it. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. All right, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or a podcast somewhere. Thanks for listening or watching. Um, we'll have this out for you this week and next week, and thanks for listening as always. Have a good week, everyone. <laughs>